Hey, it's Heather here. Uh, I just get on here and vlog and kind of talk about things that I'm else going through or thoughts that I have in my head. It's kind of like, just like a diary that's to a degree. Yeah, it's put out on the internet. Yeah, I set it to public and yeah, you know, I can't catch hate for it or whatever, but it's just, it's helping me. So, that's all that really kind of matters. Bottom line. Because I've never been this fully selfish to a degree in anything, even though people may disagree and may state that I've been very selfish in other things and stuff. And I could actually cry kind of thinking about that because that's like one thing um, dealing with my child. I have a 12 year old daughter and she's not at home and she hasn't been for almost a year now. And <clears throat> I adore her <laughs> and I've always tried to put her life ahead of mine to the best of my abilities because um, I think that's what good parents do but then there's the whole oh if you're not a happy parent you know you're not taking care of yourself then you're not taking care of your kids and stuff like that that people say and I'm just like eh. <laughs> and so it's been a balancing act all this time and everything like and it always is with anything um but this is the first time that I've kind of been like completely alone to kind of ponder and think about things and I woke up late today like I stayed up late last night um I've been thinking a lot on friendships and relationships and stuff like that <clears throat> and I've been trying to be more kind than I have been um, not more kind than what I've wanted to be like I'm not forcing myself it's not in genuine and even though I am to a degree slightly forcing myself because I want to make it a habit um, I've actually always admired people being kind and respectful and stuff like that, but at the same time, not having to kiss ass, you know. And uh, when I was younger, I actually, um, in one of my home ec classes, I took an etiquette class or whatever, like we, because we had to take the class twice. And our teacher was like, it's stupid for you have to, you to have to relearn the same shit, <laughs> you know, basically that you've already learned. So here's a book on etiquette. We're going to study etiquette. And so we were taught how to, you know, do it all, like how to curtsy and how to set and everything like that. Please, thank you, you know, yes ma'am, no ma'am, yes sir, no sir, you know, you're welcome, you know. Um, I appreciate, you know, just like very kind gestures and stuff like that. And we were taught how to pour tea correctly. And we actually, um, I think we had... To, I don't know if I was in the seventh grade or the sixth grade, but we had to pour tea for the eighth grade class. The eighth grade class um, had like a little um, tea party or something like that. I don't remember. And us that had taken the etiquette class got put into doing that or we, we got more kind of lined up to be picked for that. And I remember... Um, <laughs> we had like little snacks and everything and we had to take them out and we had to pour the tea and all kinds of stuff like that and it was just it was it was an experience um but yeah but uh I'm just very simplistic to a degree in things and I enjoy my life that way and the more I've sat here, especially over the past few days, I have felt more at home than I, like, have in a very long time. And I don't mean that to insult anybody. And I sure as hellfire do not mean for it to insult my daughter. I miss my daughter dearly. I want her home. But I have sat here and I have thought about um, the way I was raised and my grandparents and um, right now I'm sitting here with just a lamp on and like my uh, kitchen lights on but you can't tell in here and um, my grandfather and how he was always you know had to save on the power bill had to only use as minimal power as what he had to 
to see, um, to do things, and my mom gropping about it all the time, and them calling him a vampire, <laughs> because he stayed in the dark so much, <laughs> and just all that stuff, and like, simplicity, and like, going back to kind of like my childhood to a degree, like, the thought process of just sitting around and just watching TV and playing games or, you know, or, um, you know, letting my dog sit on my lap for an hour while I pet him and it's silent. It's quiet for the most part. Plus it's rainy today. So it's a great day to kind of chill and relax and stuff. And that's the reason I probably slept in so late. I didn't wake up till like almost five o'clock. And even though there's things that I want to do and so on and so forth and the rush of the world, you know, and everything and even like the internet and all that, like how great would it be like if we could find common ground, you know, for as far as what we want and stuff like that. And like it just, I don't know my thoughts and my philosophies or whatever you want to call them or the way that I choose to live my life and stuff doesn't necessarily suit everybody and I understand that and that's even like uh, me being out of work and everything even though my life is not perfect even though I need to go to the doctor says society but you know, my mind, the way that it was raised, oh, you're all right, you're okay, you can push through, you know. And just to step back and kind of kick back, and since I've had the money to pay the bills the past two months, to just breathe like I used to, but honestly, like I haven't at the same time. Because before, when I felt this comfortable, because like I said, I relate it back mainly to my grandparents, you know. And I've sat here and I'm like, God, you know, I kind of miss my mama and I miss living with her. But then I'm like, no, I don't, though, because she smokes and I hate cigarettes, you know. And, eh, you know, <laughs> even though I've thought about taking them up before myself and everything. But, you know, it's just never been something that I've kind of been pulled too much to do for as far as myself and everything and then thinking back you know of living with them and like them pushing their beliefs on you and how people tend to do that to each other constantly and even though you know um me and my landlord don't see eye to eye on things and everything um since I stood up for myself or whatever, however you would word it, or she might say it, you know, me being an asshole or whatever. And that's especially what the maintenance people pretty much said, because they're like, oh, we're going to make sure you never get your kid back. But that's a whole different, you know, drama there. And that's the thing, too, about this one video that I watched or whatever, is it's like one of the biggest life lessons is it's like your life can out to be a drama or a comedy, you know? Like, and that's the reason, like, um, I think it was in yesterday's video I was talking about humility. And I have no problem laughing at myself. Like, but then again, I do. Because if I'm trying something for, let's say, the first time, I've never done it before, I fell at it, you know, or I make a huge mess or something like that, and I'm with a group of people or even two or three people, and they just laugh their ass off, it hurts me so bad because I'm so sensitive, and I else internalize that pain, or I get angry, and then I get mad, and then I, I'm just like, you know, and then I just give up, and I'm like, fuck it, okay, I'm not going to try again, I'm never going to do it again, and then usually they'll be like, oh, but it was your first time, and you failed at it, come on, try again, try again, you know, I've had a lot of people do that to me, and it's like, I'm so sensitive, I'm done hurt so bad, that there's been a lot of times in my childhood, or my teen years, they'd be like, come on, try it again, try it again, and it's like I was always picked on and teased. And they'd be like, oh, come on, you know, we didn't mean to make fun of you. Try it again, try it again. 
And this is where my temper would come out. I mean, I would just turn around and I'd be like, I fucking said no. I'm not going to do this shit again just so you could sit there and fucking laugh at me. I'd be like, so kiss my goddamn ass. I ain't never going to fucking do it again. Kiss my ass. It's over. You know? And it's like, I'm like that. But at the same time, if I sit here and I fall on my ass and the way that I fell tickles me, you know, and I'm laughing about it and you're laughing with me, I'm cool with that, you know. Um, if I say something backwards and I catch myself, you know, or even if you catch me and the way that it, it's just your attitude, I guess, is the best way to word it, you know. It's, it's the internal, like, thinking process of why you're laughing, you know. And I can pick up on that very well. I can pick up on you're laughing at me because I'm just a joke to you. You're laughing at me because you feel uncomfortable and you're trying to take that and project it onto me. You're laughing because you never gave a shit about me at all, you know. And so, therefore, again, projecting, you know, projecting your insecurities out onto me and stuff. And I do not tolerate that. Like, I don't like it at all. And this has always been a huge thing with my family, especially, too, because, like, they're like, oh, we're just kidding, come back, we're just kidding, oh, we're just kidding, we're just kidding, come back, come back, we're just kidding, we didn't mean it, we're just kidding, you know, and, yeah, I don't, mm -mm, I don't, I can't, I can't even get into that, like, I can't stand it, but other than that, like, I can step back and look at myself, and there's times that I'm trying to be funny, and those times, especially when I'm trying to be funny and people laugh, I'm like, hell yeah, I got them to laugh, you know, I did the work and the outcome was what I expected, you know, and um, then even when I'm trying to get people to laugh, as long as they don't get, like, extremely saddened or angered, you know, and then usually when I'm trying to get them laugh and then they don't, then I pull them aside and talk to them, you know, kind of like, are you okay? You know, or I'm sorry or whatever and stuff like that. Um, a good example, there was this girl that I was working with at my last job and she was making fun of me. She was having a bad day and everybody at my old job said that I laughed like a witch, which... I mean, I kind of do. <laughs> I have several different laughs. Just like I have several different cries. Um, I have the silent cry where I can't even fucking breathe and you think that I'm going to die and I do too, <laughs> you know. And then I have the cry that's like a scream. And then I have the like little pitchy, I don't know, like half scream but not more air than anything cry. And... Then I have the kind of, <laughs> you know, or whatever type cry, I guess. But um, I have several different laughs. And as a matter of fact, when I was a kid, I literally taught myself, like, in a certain amount of time, like, as a joke, kind of, to just, to just do it. That way, like, when shit was too serious in my home, I could do it. And, like, my family would um, kind of lighten up. And my niece... She has taken that quality on because she has this laugh that I don't even know what she sounds like. It is so freaking hilarious. But at the same time, it's like, shut up. Stop doing that because she does it. Because once you teach yourself to do something like that, it kind of becomes a habit. And then I had to break myself of it because I got made fun of for this laugh at school. But I taught myself to laugh like Woody the Woodpecker. <laughs> When I was a kid. <laughs> and then there would be like two or three times that like I'd went to school after I taught myself that one summer and everything. And uh, people were like, oh my God, you know, and I was like, shut up, you know, stop. And so I had to learn to, you know, shut up whenever that laugh would try to instinctively come out because I taught myself that laugh. But, um. And I don't even want to attempt, like, no, not going there. But <laughs> anyways, uh, so uh, I have, um, 
mainly my laugh because it's so loud and everything and it sounds like a cackle or whatever to a degree and stuff it's like um they they uh teased me a lot at my last job and they've teased me a lot at several of my last few places working you know and they'll, they'll say they would say things like oh you, you know she gets on my nerves laughing that much you know and stuff like that and everything but I'm just trying to always make sure that people are happy and lighthearted. And a lot of people, unfortunately, instead of taking it as me doing that, they take it as me seeking attention, you know. And it's like, no, I just want you to be happy, damn it, you know. And then because of that, then they sit and they talk about, oh, she's wanting so much attention, attention. That's all she wants. And then they start hating me, and then they start laughing when I laugh because they're being rude and mean and manipulative back behind my back. But anyway, so I have this laugh that I do, and I sound like a witch. Whether I've done it on any of my videos yet or not, I don't know. Probably, in all honesty. Um, but anyway, so this girl... Um, She's like, God, she's like, she's got on to me several times already at the job I used to work at and stuff. She'd be like, you sound like a witch. You know, you sound like a witch. Like she was always trying to throw off on me about my laugh. And sometimes she would come across teasingly, but for the most part, it was like a throw off, like an actual, you know, backhanded insult, if you will. You know, you know, you sound like a witch when you laugh, you know, and I'm just like, yeah, or no, or well, I guess, you know, like, because I believe beauty's in the eye of the beholder, and so if you think I laugh like a witch, even if the majority thinks that I laugh like a witch, that does not mean that everybody on the face of the planet is going to think that, that laugh sounds like a witch. There's going to be people that's like, it's just a laugh, you know? And so I'm like, yeah, you know, I guess, and everything. <clears throat> so this one day, like I said, she's upset. Um, I think she'd gotten to a fight with her boyfriend or something or broke up with her boyfriend or I, I honestly can't remember. But, um, so I come in and I'm working and I'm there and I'm lighting up, you know, or whatever. And I get to talking and I get to laughing. And when I'm laughing, she's like, would you stop? She's like, you're getting on my nerves. And I was like, oh, I'm getting on your nerves. I kind of threw back a little bit of attitude that I'd felt like I'd been getting off of her. Because, like I said, she'd always been like, you know, God, you sound like a witch, you know, and stuff like, do you know you sound like a witch? And so this day in particular, I was like, I've had it, you know, like I'm having a really good time and I busted out laughing about something. And she's like, can you just stop? You sound like a witch. And I was just like, well, sorry, you know, like sorry and I was like but I'm just having a good time and somebody said something else like right after and I laughed again and she's like seriously she's like it's getting on my nerves would you just stop and I was like you do stuff like I brought it to her attention I was like you do stuff everybody does stuff all the time that gets on everybody's nerves I was like but I don't see you know how I'm hurting you you know by laughing or whatever and then like I kind of walked off and was just like, God, you know, or whatever, I think, or I, I can't even remember. But anyways, I come back, and I ended up laughing again because this other person just kept, like, telling these jokes or whatever. So I'm, like, laughing again and stuff. And she's like, would you stop? You're really getting on my nerves, you know. And I just kept doing me, you know. Like, and usually I'm not very pushy, like, that to a degree. Like, whenever there's somebody that, I know, you know, like, or I've known, if you will, like, I kind of, okay, fine, whatever you said, stop, I'll stop, you know, and so, I don't know, I said something to her, and I was just like, it's a free country, I mean, it was something like that, you know, and I was just like, it's a free country, I can laugh if I want to, and it made her start crying, not because of what I said, but to a degree, yes, because of what I said. Not in relation, but she was just her emotions because of what she'd been through was already so high. And then high vibration, if you will, you know, because a lot of people talk about that nowadays and stuff. So her emotions are done anxious, high vibration, you know, not in a good way, you know, in a negative way or whatever, you know, but just this tense 
energy or whatever. And my laughter, even though it's positive and high vibration and, you know, stuff like that and everything, it's still an intensity, you know, that comes with it. And that's what it was, is it was two intense things, you know, rubbing against each other, if you will, you know. And, you know, I rubbed a little too hard, if you will, and so she ended up crying. And when she ended up crying, I was like, are you okay? You know, and she's like, yeah, you know. And then I kind of pulled her aside and we talked. And she's like, you know, and somebody else pulled me aside, I think, and told me, you know, what was going on. And so whenever she come back to her or whatever, I was like, I'm sorry. You know, like, I'm, I'm sorry, you know. And I was like, I'll try to be more quiet, you know, and stuff or whatever. But, uh, anyways, I just ramble on about all kinds of shit whenever I get on here. I really do. There's no telling with me. Um, yesterday I read something that I wrote down and I was just like, everything is for everybody. And even though it is, I don't mean that in a way of like to go out and be greedy and be selfish, you know, and try to do everything and take everything and be like, yes, I can, you know, but it's, it's a balance, you know, it's a freedom, you know, yes, everything is for everybody, but that does not mean that you are going to get the value of actually doing it, experiencing it, or whatever, and so today, I just wrote this little thing, because, um, I watched the movie, um, The Curious Case of Benjamin Button, and if you've ever watched that, um, anyways, this woman ends up raising him, that's his mother, that, you know, like, she, she raises him, and he calls her mom, and then he finds out later on she's not really his mom, and just like in most movies and in most cases, you know, Yelts have him run away and be like, you know, you never were my mother or whatever, but in the movie or whatever, he's like, you're still my mom to the woman that's raised him and stuff. And so in that, I was just kind of sitting thinking, and, like, um... In the Bible, you know, or for as far as talking about God and stuff like that, it's like, take no thought of your day. You know, take no thought of what you're going to eat, you know, where you're going to be, what you're going to do, you know, and stuff like that. And then I looked up the definition of the word thought, and a thought is an opinion, you know, and everybody's got an opinion. Everybody's, you know, got thoughts. And so if we could control our thoughts, you know, if we could learn to pull back, and trusting God more with our thoughts, you know, and just kind of let them go and go with our intuition and our instincts. And this is the reason I do not fit in is because to a degree, I do that quite a bit. And a lot of people don't understand that because they don't do that. They do what, you know, the opinions, thoughts of others tell them to, the norm and Lord, there ain't a damn thing probably fucking normal about me in all goddamn honesty. And even in that, I'm sitting here, yeah, I'm saying goddamn. And there's a lot of people that are like, oh, you shouldn't do that. And that's one of the things that the maintenance people, that they was like, oh, you ain't never going to get any blessings because um, let me tell you, God don't like you saying goddamn. Okay, God don't like me doing that, supposedly. Um, you know, and... Yeah, it states in the Bible, do not take the Lord's name in vain. But what is the definition of that? How do you break that down? The Lord's name in vain. There's different ways that that can be broken down in different people's perspectives and in different people's minds and, if you will, in different people's opinions and thoughts. So this is where the water of the mind and everything kind of gets a little wonky and kind of a little questionable and shit. And it's just like, huh? What? You know? But if that's the case, guess what? God don't like people bearing false witness on people either. And frankly, the way that you came at me, maintenance person, about how you're going to make sure that I never get my kid back, and you're going to make sure, too, that my child doesn't even stay with her grandparents, and you're going to make sure that she goes to a completely different family, and to state, you know, and probably in all honesty, you know, I wouldn't put it past, like, I just ain't, I ain't even gonna get into it, because it's just a bunch of drama. But all I can say is I'm sorry for people that cannot have children, and I'm gonna leave it there. 
But anyway, so I, I wrote this in regards of kind of thinking all that, watching the movie, and how he's like, you know, you're my mama. And some people would disagree with that. Some people would be like, no, she's not your mother. You know, yes, she raised you. She took care of you. And that's just like me with my kid right now. You know, granted, she's with her grandparents. But for as far as the emotional attachment, I'm the one that's still there to this day, sweetheart. I guarantee you, if my daughter has an emotional breakdown, she knows who to call. Now, right now, my parents may be manipulating it, and every time they notice there's an emotional breakdown or whatever, they go to her, they take care of her, they tend to her at that moment in time. But for as far as when the time is not beneficial for both of them, when the time is not there, when the time is, you know what, <laughs> get over it. I've heard you cry about the same thing. Just like my mom. Oh my God, I used to fucking hate her for this shit. I didn't even know what the definition of the word saga was, okay? And my first kind of serious boyfriend before I dated um, my child's father, um, his name was Michael or Mike. And... Anyways, um, whenever we broke up and my mom, um, I tried to tell her once or twice about the situation about, um, my friend Steven that committed suicide and all that, but my mom didn't even care to listen. She didn't even have ears to hear me because she didn't give a shit because she'd done heard so much of me talking about Mike. She was like, oh God, here we go with the Mike saga again. Yeah. Can you shut up about the Mike saga again? Can you shut up about Mike? I don't want to hear about Mike. And then she was the same way with my kid's dad, Adam. She's like, would you shut up about him? I'm so sick and tired of hearing about it. I'm so sick and tired. Yet she would still ask questions, things she wanted, like she wanted to know if we were having sex and what positions we were having sex in. I don't even know what to say to that. Like, just damn you know, just, and I just told her it was none of her business, and boy, she got mad, did she? But anyways, I never answered her. <laughs> it's the one and only time that I've never really even tried to answer my mother, and I was just like, it's none of your business. Usually, I've always had enough respect for her to answer her about everything else. Um, but uh, then I got with my husband. Claire, well, are you okay? You okay? And then I got with my husband, and then um, I never really talked that much to my mother about my husband after we split and stuff or whatever because I done learned what was going to happen. Oh, you know, and, and like it would have been like, oh, it's another saga, you know, and so you just learn not to talk to people. You just learn to shut up. But anyways, back to the thing that I wrote. If everything stays as we first know it, what a better life that may be. It may be. It may be a better life. It may not. And that is a huge thing because imagine if you were raised by um, somebody that hasn't treated you right, <laughs> which is pretty much a little bit of my life to a degree because of emotional abuse, uh, mental abuse, physical abuse, you know, like, just every type of fucking shit you can practically go through. Luckily, sexual abuse was once that I know of, you know, and so, yeah. But, um, sorry. Go lay down. I will take care of you when I get done doing this, okay? Go lay down. Breath sticks. Go lay down. Get. Good girl. Shoot. Stinky dog. Ah. But, um. Anyways. I just thought that was like a really kind of eye-opening little thing that kind of popped up into my head. If everything stays as we first know it, what a better life 
that may be. So, just like in the movie, you know, he didn't know his mother, you know. He didn't know his actual mother that he was born of, even though, you know, technically he could have to a degree, you know. Um, but he didn't have any remembrance of her. He didn't have any idea of who she was until he found out later on after he'd done went through his childhood, if you will. And so if he never would have found out who his actual birth mother was later on, would his life have been better? You, you never know. And so, like I said, people that have endured abuse, that's like um, children, for instance. There's a lot of cases that um, I've, you know, heard of or whatever where people will chain their children in rooms. You know, there was actually one, um, I don't know when it was, I can't remember, but these people had several children and they took them to Disneyland like once a year or whatever, but the rest of the time they kept them locked up in a room and stuff. That's the reason I say maybe at the end. Because if everything stays in how you know it, is it good or is it bad? So if you know something and those children, they've known, that's the life that they've known. They have known that, you know, their parents are going to put them in their room and leave them there, you know. They've known that they're only going to get fed so much during a day. They've known that they're only going to get so many clothing or so much time to take a shower or so much time to do anything if they were even allowed, you know, and they know that they're going to have to take care of their little siblings and share food with them or whatever the case is because I don't know the full-on case, but I'm just kind of using that, you know, as a little bit of an example and stuff. And um, they know that they have to use the bathroom, you know, in the corner of the room because they're not going to be permitted to go out and use the toilet even though it's just 15 feet from the damn room that they're locked in. And so in going, yes, you know, go off of what you first know, is that correct? And the majority would say, no, that is not correct. That's abuse. You know, that's child neglect and abuse and so on and so forth. And it's not. It's not correct. So this is like where I said, where thoughts and opinions and all that, it kind of gets wonky and it kind of just, and so that's the reason people need to respect life, life, not life in the definition of, oh, you know, be a singer, be an actress, be this, be some great, you know, guru, be somebody that's got a huge name out there, be something amazing, you know, put your mark on everything that you can that's big and known and, you know, not in that way, you know, not even in the way of creating something new, but to a degree, everybody creates something new, whether they recognize it or not, that is part of human existence, but... <clears throat> It's like, respect life in it happens the way it's going to. And that really sucks sometimes. Really fucking bad sometimes. My life sucks sometimes. Those kids that got locked in a friggin' room by their parents. That is fucking insane and horrible. And I've been through enough shit of my own that I can sit here and I can be like, that's worse than what the fuck I'm going through. And that's just like one of my friends that I talked to like two nights ago. And they were like, you know, that happened, that happened, that happened. And it was like a bunch of deaths, you know, if you will. And I've, I've been through that. Uh, my family has always been like, oh, deaths come in threes. And it literally has fucking seemed like it throughout my whole damn life, in all honesty. And I'm 30 years old, and I know that I have probably lost damn near anywhere from 25 to maybe 30 or more family members and <clears throat> pets because I've always been into having pets, and we've had cats, and the cats, you know, cats pop out like litters of kittens, you know, to a degree, kind of like crazy. And 
So, anyways, and then my dad, he, he made them be outdoors because he didn't want them in, and, so, and he wouldn't pay to get them fixed, so they just had, kept having babies. And in that and everything, it's like I've lost a lot of pets. I literally tried to count it one time, and I got up to, like, 25, and I was crying so bad because um, there was two pipsqueaks and two or three tigers that I've had in my life and I got mad because my mom stole the name Pipsqueak from me and gave it to another cat and then after I got over its name being the same as the cat that I had had that I had named and gave the first name to uh I thought it was disrespectful but then I was like ah whatever and I was like I can't be mad at this kitten for its name being what it is because my mom named it and so I got over it and I started attaching myself to the cat, and I started taking care of the cat, and the cat was sick, and it ended up dying, and I was just like, fuck, you know? <laughs> and, I mean, I've just, I've, uh, death has always been around me. And while I'm not afraid of dying, I'm really not, I'm not afraid of dying. That's the reason, like, it's like, you know, um, threats don't do too good with me whenever people kind of like little threats, you know, and by little threats is, I mean, anything that's not a threat other than death, practically death is the biggest threat that somebody can put on me. And when people finally boil down to that point that they want to put that threat on me, I'm just like, okay, okay, you're going to kill me, do it. Go for it. Whatever. Oh, you're going to kick my ass and beat me into submission until I, you know, listen or until I'm dead? You know, and I'm like, okay. You know, like, I don't know. I just, and I learned to disassociate. That's one thing that I talked to my counselor about, you know, from when I was a kid. That's the reason, like, it scares me that she's like, oh, you know, I think you was sexually abused more than what you think on. And I was just like, I don't want to think on it, though. And that's my choice, you know. And that is a part of my mind. that it, it, I, I've done come to rest with it, at least at this moment in time. If the day ever comes that I do want to explore if that shit happened to me, then that day will come. But if that day does not come, then it doesn't because I'm at rest with it. And that's the reason I don't like people digging with me on shit like that is because if you're at rest with something, you know, then be at rest with it, you know. <sighs> I don't know. Life's hard. It's difficult. But people need to respect each other. And that's just like um, the beginning of the book where it says, you know, don't get on to me, you know, like I read out of the beginning of it. What is it? If I do not want what you want, please try to not tell me that my want is wrong. There you have it. <laughs> that's it in a nutshell, you know, like. Don't get on to me for my shit that makes me happy. And that's just like, um, for as far as societal norms, that's one thing, too, that I've been setting here. Like, I've been using, even though, yes, I'm getting on here and I'm still doing my videos, I've been kind of tapering off a little, I've noticed, for as far as using my phone and, like, getting on the Internet and stuff. And I'm proud of myself each day that I do. And I'm proud of myself for not using it. And I'm proud of myself for not getting on here, you know. And I'm proud of myself for getting on here, though, and doing my video every day like I said I was going to and sticking with that. But I never even wanted this technological world um, to a degree is the best way I can think of the word. it. Even though I was taught in school how to use a computer, I used to know how to type like crazy. And then it's like, I don't know. I went home and that summer came and I got the sh scared out of me is the best way to word it and a lot of emotional trauma and stuff and so I just I forgot and that's a lot of things like how a lot of things has happened to me and stuff is like I've got scared because post-traumatic stress disorder if you will back into 
fuck, okay, I don't know shit. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> you know? And I literally, like, parts of my brain, it's like it just blocks out with other shit or whatever and stuff. So, anyways, <clears throat> I think I think that's the year he took my door off the hinges. That, some, uh, that year. No, it was before summertime. That's right, because I got mad and I was like, it's fixing to be fucking summertime. I need my damn door back. I think that scared the shit out of me, like, because I, I was certain he was going to kill me. But, um... <clears throat> Anyways, because, I mean, shit, somebody tells you they're going to kill you, like, literally tells you that practically every day of your life, you kind of start to think, it's going to happen one day. <laughs> Sometimes I still worry about that, and that's the reason I acted all crazy, you know, and I still kind of catch myself sometimes in a panic and in a rush of anxiety thinking he's going to pull a gun on everybody, kill everybody, and then I'm going to get a phone call, you know, and it's going to be like, hey, your whole family's dead. Well, not your whole family, but just, you know, your dad, he, he pulled the gun on your nieces, shot them, shot your daughter, shot your mom, and then shot himself. And the only thing that I'm going to be thinking is that I want to murder the people that allowed my parents to take temporary custody of my daughter. I mean, yes, I'm going to be devastated, but I've done cried so much and became detached in that way because the government, the police, the nobody gets that. They don't understand that. They don't care for that. My attorney sure as fuck don't give a flying fuck about it. Um, he'll sit there and laugh and be like, well, why don't you just think about getting a second job? You know, like, and nobody gets what I'm going through. And that that's okay. Uh, it really is. It really is. And that's not even my purpose of my YouTube is to get on here and be like, know me, you know, all about me. Know me. Understand me. I don't give a shit if nobody gets me anymore. I'll be honest. I barely get myself some days. And it's okay. That's the way that I live my life. That's the way that I was designed to survive. And we all have survival. And we all have ways that we're designed to handle things. And to try to impede and push your opinions and your thoughts on others when you're not even supposed to take thoughts of your own shit to a degree. And you're not supposed to be overly opinionated and the world and the internet is nothing but opinions. It is an existence of constant interaction of one person's opinion against another's. And it's madness. It's maddening. It's insane. Um, but anyways, back to school. You know, I learned in school how to use computers. We were actually told, I think in the ninth grade, to set up a Facebook account. We were recommended to. Um, and so in that, and, uh, our first email, that's right. Um, our first email and Facebook accounts and my, my space, we were recommended to do this in school. And so I thought I could get away from it once I realized how well I was doing to a degree without it. But then the rest of society is b dependent upon it dependent upon the internet and so I wanted my life to move forward I wanted to get a job I want to drive I want to do these things but the standards have been raised from what I was taught that they were going to be you know I was taught at the age of seven you know hey when you turn 15 you know, you'll be ready to go get your learners, you know, and all you have to do is have your mom or dad care to take you, you know. Well, mom and dad didn't care to take me, you know, and that standard got set way the fuck up because 15 years later, I finally get my damn license. <laughs> it's like the advice of the elders does not help in the future. It doesn't because the future is a constant changing force it's just constantly moving and so then 
with people like me that are kind of in the middle, you know, which we all get to where we're in the middle, but I'm in the middle. It's like I had to get on Facebook. I had to get on Facebook just so I could have a friend because everybody has Facebook in the United States for the most part, you know. Even homeless people that have friggin' damn uh, food stamp phones or whatever, they have Facebook because they use their, you know, they, they go to the library and get on the free computers or they do this and that. So that way they can fit in. They're trying to fit in to get ahead, to get what they want out of their life to survive. And it is fucking ridiculous. And it reminds me of this one story that I heard or read or whatever that was shared throughout Facebook. And it was something with a guy like selling tomatoes is how it started or bananas or I don't, I don't know. I think it was tomatoes. I'm pretty sure it was tomatoes. But anyways, he like went and bought them on clearance, if you will, and went out and sold them and made a profit off of them. And then he did that and everything. And that's how he went about living his life and so on and so forth. And um, he became a businessman. And they were like, you know, like he, as he was going up into, you know, being, you know, like this perfect business person, which I don't even know who the story was about. And I can't guarantee that it's even factual based, but I think it was. Um, it's like, they asked him, you know, when he had his first job, filled out his first application, you know, what's your email address? And he's like, I don't have one. Well, now it's like, oh, you don't have an email address. Well, that sucks. You can't have the job, you know, and it's still like that. And for the most part, you can't have most jobs unless you have an email address. It is very hard to go back and just put in a paper application somewhere and get a job just based upon a paper application. It is very hard to get a job if you do not have email. It is very hard to get a job if you don't even have a fucking Facebook. Because they want you to have a Facebook. That way they can look in on you and see what you say, what you do, what you're up to in your personal private life, if you will. Or just who you are. So that way they can keep an eye on you because we... We've grown up in an over-paranoid world now where it's like, oh, everybody's a criminal and everybody's trying to screw everybody over and everybody's all greedy and all for themselves and so you got to protect yourself, you know. And it's just absurdity and it's ridiculous and it's exhaustive. But, I mean, I still have Facebook even though I only have four friends on there right now and even at that, I got to thinking about that. There are people that um, have certain last names that I don't get along with. And all four of my friends have anywhere from one to five or ten of these people that they themselves on their Facebooks are friends with. And then there's even things that my, me and my friend Jen, if you've ever watched my videos before, I get on here and mention her a lot. She's the one that helped me get my learners. Um, she deals with anxiety and stuff like that. But she's been very good to me, you know, for the most part, at least to my face, I guess is the best way to put it. Even though sometimes there's there's been a few things that she said that's kind of questionable. But... um. I can put up certain posts on my Facebook sometimes, and instead of her putting a like on them, she will put a laugh. And it's almost like in a mocking type way how it comes across sometimes, and I'm just like, hmm. And then this one um, keeps putting up posts, especially since I've been putting up posts about, hey, if you're not my friend, just get off. If you're just staying on my Facebook to shit talk, to have something to talk about, get off. I put up a post and I was like, I'm looking for real friends. I've always, my whole life, I've looked for real friends. And so she's been putting up these posts about, oh, you know, ain't nobody for you. You got to ride solo. Oh, you really thought, you know, the little gangster type shit that teenagers are more prone to, in my opinion. But, I mean, I know people my age do it and even past my age. But, um, I... And I've done it. I'm, I'm, I've shared shit that's like, oh, honey, you think? You know, don't try me. You know, like, I, I'll get on that attitude. I'll catch one real quick, you know, <laughs> like, if I need to. But I'm not about that life. I'm not about that way. 
I'm more old school. I'm more like uh, I said in yesterday's video, I think there was a thing going around that I took a, a screenshot of to save it because I was like, hell yeah. <laughs> I was like, that's me. <laughs> but it was like, oh, you got a problem with me? And so it broke down all the zodiac signs and how they handle it. And I'm a Leo for as far as Western, but I, Vedic, I'm a Cancer. And that's the only two that it had listed up under this category. And it was like, oh, you got a problem with me? Fight me, bitch. And so I'm old school in that way, in that sense. You know, like, yes, it takes a lot for me to get there, though. And a lot of people think that I don't get there because I haven't been in a lot of fights. Because we live in a pussyfoot generation to a degree that, oh, you know, you did this and you did that. And just like the old timers talk about the millennials and shit like that and everything. They talk about them being whiny and not being tough enough and shit like that. And I don't know. I guess all I can say is I, I was raised old school. So I was raised to kind of sit there and take shit until you can't fucking take it no more. And to just still keep taking it. But once it comes knocking at your door, that's when you square things away yourself, you know, and that's when you take things into your own hand, you know, and by the grace of God, you know, you get down to business and you get the shit done. So, anyways, <laughs> and I'm not trying to come across as cocky, and I guess that's why I do come across as intimidating, because I've sat here before and whined and even bitched, and I'm like, why do people find me intimidating? I don't get it. I don't understand it, and I've actually cried because there's a lot of opportunities that I've missed because people are like, you come across as really intimidating, really this, you know, really, you know, and I'm like, but I'm a big old softy. I'm a sweetheart, and I cry all the time, you know? But like I said, you know, I have my values that I actually stand for. But anyway, so this uh, one girl, she keeps sharing this stuff. And one thing that she shared was, oh, you know, I've been, oh, you got the last laugh? Well, I don't care or something like that because I've been laughing at your dumb ass this whole time. And then something else about, um... Oh, you, you wanted to keep on messing around until you finally fucked up and you messed with a real one, you know, and don't think that, you know, da-da-da-da-da, you know, and all that and everything. And I was just like, and it's at the same time that I'm posting the stuff that I'm posting, but I know she's got a lot of people on her page, but she's got a lot of people that, you know, um... Yeah, and that's just like my newest neighbor. Like, I was like, we could be related because my family's related to some people. Woo, I hit myself in the face. <laughs> but uh, my people is related to some people with the last name that's the same as yours, you know. And um, she's she even was like, oh, yeah, well, maybe, you know. And I feel like I've seen her before, and I mentioned that to her, and she tried to be like, no. And then that's just like my friend, I ain't even going to label, but I'm just going to say another friend on my Facebook, and we'll leave it at that. Um, they say that they're not from around here. And yet the more that um, I see who they're friends with, and their friends are from around here, they're old-time friends, for as far as I'm understanding. I'm just like, <laughs> you sure you ain't from around here? Because I feel like you are, and I feel like you're lying to me. But if you're lying to me, I'll let God take that into consideration. That is not a place for me to step and judge. And um, another thing, too, that this girl shared was about um, friends. And it was this guy uh, made a video or whatever, and it was like a rap or a song or poetry. I don't know. But anyways, he asked the question, if all you had to offer was friendship, who would be by your side still? And people want to say that so that way they sound smart about that. They want to say, you know, smart things. But they don't want to live smart ways. And that is one of the biggest flaws of all generations. Not just this generation. You can say it. And that's even like me. I say some things that 
come out of nowhere to a degree from where I'm sitting at. And I'm just like, whoa, that's profound. and Whoa, that speaks to me. And whoa, okay, thank you, God, for giving me that thought, you know. And thank you, God, for everything that I do have. That's like another thing, too, is just sitting here and appreciating. I have a home, you know, even though it's not a permanent home. It could change tomorrow. My landlord could get mad and be like, I fucking hate you and I'm kicking your ass out and, you know, and here's your money back or whatever, you know, or get the fuck out. I mean, you know, things can change. Circumstances can change all the time at a drop of a hat, you know. So you have to learn to appreciate what you do have. And then even at that, you're not always the best at it. My dog's looking at me right now, and she's like, would you please just take care of me and fuck that shit, you know? And I'm just like, I got to do me, you know, right now. And so it, it comes in, ba like, I don't know. It, it's just finding balance, and it's really hard, especially, like, in today's world and the way that things are and the way that people get on social media and think that they live their life through social media, and some of them do. Some of them really do. That is their only life that they have. They live in the fantasy line, or land, not line, but they live in the fantasy of what is on a screen, what is written on the web, that can be accessed by anybody or even if it's not by anybody and everybody that can be accessed by a hacker at all points in time that that is the only life that they live and this the reality and that's the reason I've said oh I'm a realist you know and I've had people throw off on that about me before in my life when I've been like that but they don't understand that this is the reality you know like the internet, to a degree, has become nothing more than a dream world to some that they allow themselves to live in. It's an escape. And it's really hard to keep that in mind when society is like, no, you have to do that. You know, you have to get on the internet to have a job, to be somebody, to get a job. You know, people that have high-end jobs use the internet every fucking day. You know? Like, they, they live there. And, no offense, but I've never wanted to live there. <laughs> and you may never want to live here. You may never want to live sitting and just watching a movie and petting a dog and the quiet, you know, and being grateful that you have heat or food or air, you know, or a roof over your head and the simplicities, you know, and even if you're alone and you don't have a friend and the only thing that you do have to offer any friend is friendship, you know, you might not want to live there. And I may not always want to live here, but I guarantee you right now, today, in my opinion, in my thought, <laughs> which I'm not supposed to have any of, but I do anyways, because we all do, and we're all human, and we all sin. I enjoy this. I, I enjoy the simplicity of things. And, um, yeah. And it's not because I'm ignorant, and I don't have the ambition, or drive, or intelligence, or the ability to comprehend, so that way I can gain the intelligence Everybody can go to school. Everybody can learn. And that's just like I said yesterday or whatever. Um, everything is for everybody. But it doesn't mean that just because everything is for everybody that that means we all need to go after it. And we need to find out who we are. We need to define ourselves but not define ourselves so strictly that we're stuck to it. That when something happens that it shakes us that we become unglued unless we are ready to become unglued. But I like a simple life. I like cozy and warm and decorations on my wall, even if my landlord hates them, and smelly, stinky pets, if you will, even though I don't like them stinking in all honesty. 
and I wish if I could get in a bathing routine every week, have like them be bathed on Mondays or stuff. And I'm a homebody, and I probably would make a great housewife to a degree, you know. But my life has not necessarily allowed that, except for to the degree that it has, you know. And maybe it never will anymore. I don't know. Or maybe it will. Please go, baby. I'll, I'll deal with you in just a minute. I'm fixing to end it. But, um... <clears throat> I don't know what life, I don't know what God, I don't know what anybody has in store for me. Sometimes I think people have in store for me very bad things. Sometimes I think God even has stuff in store for me that's very bad or very difficult. But you get up and you move forward and you keep going and you struggle and you get through it. And that's all you can do. But I'm going to end this video here. If you like my video or you like anything about me, you can hit the like. You can comment, share, or subscribe. Um, <clears throat> and for as far as everybody that sees this, I hope you have a great day. I hope you're doing well. I hope you have some great sleep tonight. I hope you rest well. I wish you the best. Keep pushing. Put your best foot forward. Be as kind as possible. Be as nice as you possibly can. Be as loving as you possibly can. Know that love is always going to be the best answer that you can give. Um, kindness, you know, forgiveness and all that. And if you're not ready to do that, then don't, don't be hard on yourself. Everything comes in due time. Respect your journey. I'm going to end it here. I'll catch you later.